Hello everyone and welcome to my channel once again. I'm finally bringing you the Soga King Rapid Fire build, the build that a lot of you have been asking for uh, since the release of my first video because, well, I think I know why. Uh, because it's a breath of fresh air. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's something different than playing Twisting Blades for weeks and weeks and, we and weeks. It actually feels like a whole different uh, class. So let's get right into it. Let's start off with uh, abilities. So we are using uh, one point in puncture, enhanced puncture and fundamental puncture. Puncture helps us with uh, vulnerable as well as with slow, thus putting uh, crowd control on the target. Five points in rapid fire, uh, enhanced rapid fire and advanced rapid fire. Uh, I will explain uh, how this works. Basically, uh, you always do three order attacks, then you use rapid fire and immediately after pressing rapid fire you use evade. That way, uh, that rapid fire and well all the other rapid fires within five seconds will have increased uh, crit strike uh, damage plus you will do an animation cancel. Uh, so that's very important to uh, do. Uh, when, to when we are going to be talking about gear, uh, you will see uh, and you will understand the choices that I made there. Uh, three points into sturdy, one point into siphoning strikes. It could be two points if you are playing with enshrouding aspect on your helmet instead of a lethal dusk. Uh, and I will explain that in the gear and aspect section uh, as well. Uh, three points in weapon mastery, one point in dash, one point in enhanced dash. Uh, this is rapid fire build. It's heavily focused on crit strike damage. So an extra 15% increased crit strike damage is very sweet uh, because we need to use dash anyway to be able to proc close quarters combat. One point in concussive, one point in trick attacks, three points in agile, uh, three points in Mending Obscurity, uh, because we are stealthing a lot. So this is uh, pretty much our small momentum and stolen vigor kind of healing. Uh, one point in Concealment, five points in Dark Shroud for the extra DR. Uh, enhance Dark Shroud and here we are going for countering Dark Shroud instead of subverting because once again this is heavily Grid Strike damage focus build, so Grid Strike chance is the best in slot. Uh, that's what uh, makes us do damage uh, in the first place. Uh, three points in Exploit, three points in Malice, one point in Shadow Imbuement, Enhanced Shadow Imbuement, Mixed Shadow Imbuement, one point in Cold Imbuement, Enhanced Cold Imbuement, and Mixed Cold Imbuement. Uh, three points into Frigid Finesse, the other three points we have from uh, our gear. I still, ever since the release of my first video thing, this is the strongest passive in the game uh, for damage for Rogue. Um, and it works like we are instant killing everything with one rapid fire, it doesn't matter whether they are frozen or not but it works against bosses. Uh, so it will help us kill bosses before they even reach uh, stagger. Uh, three points into precision imbuement, uh, because rapid fire is not as uh, fast as twisting blades is, or twisting blades are. Uh, we pretty much like more than half uh, of our skills uh, use with imbuements. So this is just extra crit strike chance, as I said, uh, crit strike chance is best in slot for any crit strike damage based uh, builds. Uh, one point in adrenaline rush, uh, three points in haste. Um, I don't think there's a single build not using these. It's just extra movement speed, extra uh, attack speed, extra, um, you know, extra energy regeneration. So that's always good. And close quarters combat. If you really, really want, you can play with precision instead. But to be honest, it's a complete garbage um, passive skill. Uh, because unfortunately, it doesn't proc uh, only when using your core skill. It procs um, of every marksman skill. So 90% of the time, uh, you will be proccing precision 
on your puncture. So making it basically absolutely useless passive compared to how strong close quarters combat is because it is gonna give you attack speed to be able to you know use more rapid fires uh, to be able to stack three combo points faster uh, and it also gives you an insane amount of damage increase against crowd controlled enemies which are basically all the enemies so yeah <clears throat> Uh, that's it uh, for the skill tree uh, if you are playing in shrouding aspect then I already told you uh, you can put two points in siphoning strikes uh, instead of one uh, basically uh, you'd take out mending obscurity uh, because uh, the only stealth uh, you can get while using in shrouding aspect is concealment which we are not using as much uh, to be stacking Mendic Obscurity. It's really good because uh, sometimes when you have like a damage over time effect on you uh, or if you are in a dire situation, the stealth can help you out a lot uh, and the Mending Obscurity as well. But basically you just put one point away from Mending Obscurity, uh, put it into uh, Siphoning Strikes and uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so uh, now when we look at the gear, so on our helmet, uh, the stats that you want are cooldown reduction, uh, maximum life when you are playing with Lethal Dusk, or life on kill when you are playing with Entrouding, then total armor, and then basic skill attack speed. Uh, the aspect here that I'm using is Lethal Dusk. Uh, what Lethal Dusk uh, does is that uh, whenever we evade through enemy infected by our shadow imbuement we gain stealth that works well with the mending obscurity uh, and after breaking stealth we gain a max life on kill that's why we don't need it on our helmet and go for life instead uh, on our chest we are using dr distant dr close dr flat armor and aspect of might um, for more dr on our gloves Crit strike chance, lucky hit chance, and then attack speed after dodging an attack. Uh, this build is heavily focused on uh, dodge. Uh, I forgot to mention in the skill tree that the agile gives you 12% uh, dodge chance as well. So this is heavily uh, dodge chance based uh, build. So the ability to get 25% attack speed rather than just 15 from normal attack speed is so strong. Um, Manglers is the aspect that we are using on our gloves for more CC, uh, you know, more days, etc. Um, for our pants, what you really want is DR close, DR distant, dodge chance, could be dodge chance from close, but uh, dodge chance flash is better, uh, and total armor. I am, for example, using max life and damage reduction flood here. Uh, it works basically dodge chance, total armor, and then any other two um you know defensive stats uh, that's what you want to go for Ambrose is the aspect uh to give us our dark shroud because we are not actually using it as our active skill on our action bar uh also what's important is while injured your potion also grants you max life as barrier uh, everything else is pretty bad you really 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 want to aim for that uh for our boots What's super important, basically the build doesn't work without it, is that uh, our attacks reduce evades cooldown by whatever. I have the lowest roll there, but it's still fine. Uh, it works. You don't really need uh, more. Uh, for the stats there, we go movement speed, energy cost reduction, uh, damage reduction while injured, and dodge chance against distant. Uh, for aspect, we are using a shared misery to spread all of the CC uh, all around us. Uh, on our uh, as for our weapon, we go for vulnerable damage. We go for crossbow, of course. Uh, vulnerable damage, core skill damage, all stats and dexterity. You might ask, why core skill damage when the build is based around crit strike damage? Well. If your core skill does poop damage, then it doesn't matter that you multiply it, it's still gonna be poop. So um, you need a nice mix of both of these stats to actually benefit from some damage increase. 
our aspect here is repeating uh, so that we can do even more AoE damage, uh, not with just our Barber explosions. Then, uh, for our amulet, we are going cooldown reduction and then max dexterity. That's uh, like uh, the preferable stat there because it gives us more dodge chance. Uh, three ranks of rigid finesse. And then, what you really, really want is movement speed, especially. When playing with Lethal Dusk, uh, you are stealthing a lot and you can actually use it as a super, super speed farming build. Just, you know, like, um, skip two packs with your concealment. Then the next pack you attack with your shadow imbuement, evade through them, you gain stealth for another four seconds, you know, you skip another two packs and you can just repeat doing that over and over till you finish the dungeon. So movement speed is really important, but damage for 4 seconds after dodging an attack or attack speed uh, after dodging an attack is also uh, good. Uh, aspect here is, as always, disobedience. Uh, for our rings, you want vulnerable damage, grid strike chance, grid strike damage, and then one of the rings should have total life and the other should have grid strike damage with imbued skills but lucky hit chance or another uh, another life or um, you know anything really works there uh, our aspect here is expectant attacking enemies with basic skill increases the damage of your next uh, core skill because it's so important to always use rapid fire with three combo points uh, we are always always getting uh, the max value out of this uh, the other ring we are going for edge masters uh, again because this is not as fast as Twisting Blades, you do three auto attacks or three basic attacks and then rapid fire, you're basically always at max energy. So this is just extra damage. Uh, and um, for our weapons, we are using Condemnation, uh, which will uh, increase the damage of our rapid fire by 40%, or at least that's the role uh, that I've got uh, when used with three combo points, which is every single time uh, and the other weapon is sword not a dagger but sword because swords give us another crit strike damage uh, and they give us vulnerable and then we go for vulnerable damage crit strike damage crit strike damage with imbued and all stats now you want dexterity here instead of crit strike damage with imbued as long as your amulet has a uh, percentage dexterity increase, okay? If it doesn't have it, if it has anything else, then you won't crit strike damage with imbued skills, um, because that's uh, simply better. Uh, dexterity on the weapon you want, um, you know, when you got it, because it will help you get a lot of dexterity that will not only increase the damage but also as I said before dodge chance and dodge chance is super important uh, because you know why reduce the damage from the enemy when you can just ignore it completely right so that's it for the gear our hearts are uh, barber heart here you want around three seconds that's like the perfect heart for doing you know uh, three basic attacks and then rapid fire into evade. I have four seconds here. It still works. It is still good because the way Barber Heart works is that if you do enough damage to the enemy uh, for it to die, then it will die instantly. It's not gonna, you know, stay alive for four seconds if you already did uh, more damage than its HP. So, absolutely everything apart from maybe some elites, will die with ra one rapid fire. One rapid fire, everything will explode. You don't have to worry about the timer here. But if you want to really min-max the damage, then like 2.8 seconds, uh, 2.8 seconds, something like that uh, would be what uh, I'd aim for. Uh, the other heart is, uh, as always, the heart that gives us more DR. Uh, basically, no build is played without that. 
and our last heart is actually a vicious one that gives us even more crit strike damage and it decreases but it decreases our non crit strike damage uh, so that's why crit strike chance is so so important and if you are playing with elixirs then obviously you go for more crit strike chance you can also go for the elixir that increases both crit strike chance and crit strike damage so that's it for the gear as you can see the armor here is around 1000 less than what i have with my twisting blades build but that's because we simply don't need that much dr with this build um we have let me see defensives 18% flat dodge chance and dodge chance against distant enemies is 15% so combined it's a 31% uh, dodge chance from distant enemies that helps you tremendously with banshees and like stingers and archers um, that are attacking you from afar and obviously uh, as I said before we get another 12% from playing agile so it's almost 30% because obviously it diminishes the more you get it the, the less you get so it's almost 30% dot chance uh, flat so against close enemies as well and then like very very high 30 ish uh, percentage uh, for dot chance against distant enemies so yeah we are dodging a lot we are ignoring all the damage there uh, plus because uh, we have the evade cooldown reduced by our attacks we basically have no cooldown on evade you do attack attack rapid fire evade attack 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 rapid fire evade like over and over um, again so like every second and a half uh, you are evading uh, maybe even less than second and a half you are evading so uh, you can reduce a lot of the damage taken by evading the damage uh, and because this is a ranged build or like we are playing in close quarters uh, but uh, it is still a ranged build so whenever you feel uh, unsafe um, you can just kite and you can play from afar like no one is saying that you cannot play uh, from a range and I actually do that uh, quite a lot myself when like I'm low on HP or I just don't want to risk dying I just kill the enemies from afar I just do a few attacks you know rapid fire with uh, some imbuements they just die <laughs> so that's why all the you know damage uh, reduction against distant dot chance against distant uh, comes in handy as well uh, as for Paragon Borg the starter board we go for diminish for some extra DR against vulnerable enemies and you know just the flat uh, damage increased with a skillful uh, node then we go for cheap shot here we take combat and basically all the intellect nodes around for as much crit strike damage as possible then we go up here we take cunning stratagem um, the tooltip says when you take cunning stratagem that you will fi uh, fire nine arrows instead of eight but I did a slow motion and you will fire 10 arrows so this is very very important uh, to have it's uh, a lot of extra damage uh, here we are going for all the core skill damage because as I said you need your core skill damage to be good uh, and not poop otherwise your crit strike damage will be poop as well uh, we are going for exploit we are again taking pretty much all the strength nodes around not only to increase our damage uh, but to be able to reach our other rare nodes uh, as uh, well then we go to the left uh, here uh, we are taking the no witness board and control uh, glyph here uh, we are again going for some more damage more damage more crit strike damage then we go to the right here uh, which is um, our exploit weakness board uh, here we are using devious again more damage against crowd, crowd controlled enemies uh, we are crowd controlling enemies a lot a lot a lot so this is very important it also gives us 
uh, another extra vulnerable damage. We are stacking crit strike damage and vulnerable damage basically uh, with this build. So that's a lot of vulnerable damage here thanks to Devious. Uh, we go here, we take the legendary node this time uh, in this build, uh, exploit weakness to help us with uh, single target damage with killing the bosses respectably fast. And our last board is uh, Tricks of the Trade and here we take a Ranger uh, for some more DR, uh, more damage, more maximum skill damage and then some like elite damage and armor as uh, well so um, yeah this is it for the build I will have uh, the full builder in the description down below uh, for both uh, the um, little dusk aspect and enshrouding aspect and also you will see a real small difference in the board uh, and that's that uh, in the max roll builder we are actually going for a press here uh, which is more damage than my board has but unfortunately my rolls are really bad I have only uh, 66 all stats uh, so I'm missing out on 20 all stats I had to improvise a little bit you know swap some um, swap some points around to be able to reach the rare nodes that uh, we need to reach so uh, if you're luckier than me then you don't have to do that but if you are as unlucky as I am then these are the points uh, you have to sacrifice these are the points like least impactful in what you're sacrificing over the others okay so you take these points out and you just you know put it elsewhere like I put two points uh, into more damage to healthy and crit strike damage and seven seven and a half percent crit strike damage here um, you know and then some uh, some notes uh, all around so yeah I really hope you enjoyed the build uh, I hope you will enjoy playing it because I'm having a blast and uh, thank you for watching see you in the next one the next one will probably be uh, the updated updated guide to my poison ivy because I'm ha like I'm getting so many messages like can I use uh, different skill than this can I use uh, you know different aspect etc so uh, the next build guide will be more like even more in-depth poison ivy where I explain literally every existing skill set for poison uh, rogue poison builds uh, in 100 nightmare uh, end game content that exists in the world you can choose whatever you want it works the important part is the Paragon board. So, once again, and now for real, see ya. Ciao.